Rising oil costs, melting polar ice caps, cow power, biodiesel, solar, wind. Confused about finding the solutions to your self-sustainability? Well, welcome to Local Green. I'm Annie Schlesinger, and I'm going to be bringing you news about the new solutions to these problems as they come into our community. Today, Peg Winship and I are going to be joining local Shaftesbury farmer John Williamson, who is making his own biodiesel fuel. Come on! Local farmer John Williamson, three years ago, had the vision to start growing his own oil crops. From these crops, he is now making his own biodiesel fuel to run his entire farm. He is one of the first farmers in the state of Vermont to perfect this technique. We wanted to start making oil crops on our farm, so we looked at what crops we could grow with the equipment that we have mm -hmm. and harvest it with the machines we have. So that's why we kind of chose the canola to start with. Um, And John takes us into the barn, which he built with the help of the UVM Extension Service. John then explained the entire process to us. After the seeds are harvested, they are brought into the barn via an auger. In a large cone-shaped container, the seeds fall into the press, which squeezes the oil out of the seeds. The oil then runs into the settlement tank. What is left over is called the meal and is then fed to the cows. The meal is expressed the oil squeezes out, the grain just drops into this. What squeezes the oil out? It there's gets a, pressed? Yeah, there's a screw press inside of that mill when it creates a lot of pressure on the grain and grinds the grain and squeezes the oil out. Mm -hmm. and it runs off into these settling tanks. Okay, that tank holds enough oil to fill this reactor tank and this is a batch system for making biodiesel. And this big tank here in the end is our reactor tank. That's where the mixing takes place. The small tank in the middle is where the methoxide is made. That's where we mix alcohol and uh, lye together. Then that is transferred into the big tank and the batch is mixed. And you get uh, a reaction uh, that creates that biodiesel. You get a layer of glycerin that uh, participates out in the biodiesel. And that's why we have a cone tank on the end for settling. Um, to settle out the blisters, we can uh, you know, separate them from the biodiesel. So it's essentially oil. I always thought biodiesel was just straight vegetable oil. No. But you have to separate the glycerin out. Yeah, and that's what you get when you drive that reaction with the alcohol and the lye. And it's a recipe you do a tritation to figure out how much lye and alcohol to, to put in. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the alcohol you use is what? We've been using um, methanol, and our intentions are to start producing ethanol so we can use our own ethanol hmm. to, to do the reaction. To be a true biofuel, you really need to make it from ethanol. What did a company put this, you know, did you buy this whole rig from a company? Oh, no, we, we built this whole thing from scratch. You know, it's all used parts. Years from now, um, and just sort of the role biofuel would play in this area. You know, have it, what do you think? Well, it's the price of petroleum fuel is what's going to drive this, really. If, if the price of petroleum doubles in the next five years, or worse yet, it becomes scarce, this is going to be on everybody's mind. Yeah. Not, how can we make our own fuel? And in our case, you know, we have control over this source of fuel, and we also have control of the price of it. So we can grow our own fuel and have a secure source of fuel to run our farm. And if we have any extra, we can sell it at whatever the going rate. And I'm sure it would equal petroleum prices if we decided to sell any. So, you know, take all the economics out of it. Just having a secure source of fuel is 
really priceless. Yeah. Especially if there was fuel shortages, because if there was, who would get the fuel in our country? <laughs> you know. So, so in that case, it's you know, without fuel on a farm, nothing is going to get done. So to me, that's really important. I, yeah. I mean, could you see would there be farms around here? What about people who are not farming? Well, we've been would you be able to supply people? Would they drive up, or you know? Well, how could you? You're never going to see a gas pump out in front of this barn. That's <laughs> not our intentions to yeah. ever get into the. It, our our intention is to keep this a small scale, farm scale sized biofuel operation, and what that means is we're going to make our own fuel enough for ourselves, and if we have any extra, we'll sell it. Like if we have extra hay or extra corn, we'll sell it. That's and like what fuel. form? Like someone would come with a big tank and fill up well, fill another farmer or? Yeah, I mean, I think right at the moment we would have to look at off-road markets and that, that our, any fuel that we could make on our farm could be sold within a half mile circle here if we just filled up fuel oil tanks and people sell it for their furnaces. Um, the other goal of our, our thing is to keep this running 24-7 but to bring in crops from other neighboring farms. Mm -hmm. And process their crops and give them the fuel back and the meal back. Um, so that's kind of our goal. Um, we're not going to supply the world's needs with fuel here. news today. It's the crop algae which has the capacity to double its volume in one day and is 50% oil. And it's already being grown in Holland.